Your priorities emerge out of your evaluation of what you're likely to do from a performance perspective over the next year and what that means from a financial perspective. So priorities are, at the end of the day, give and take and a cause and effect. And so as an organization in setting priorities, you have to determine what is the potential impact of neglecting something or putting something ahead of something else in terms of what we choose to focus on in a world of limited resources. inexplainable gross margin or profit margins where you're looking at your profit margin and you intuitively know it should be better, that often is a sign that something within that, the execution of steps that leads you to profit is not executing the way it should. So you have a lot of companies where you have metrics. You know that if you're in this particular industry, a good margin is 10% or in that industry, a good margin is 30%. Well, if you're operating below those numbers, you got to look at the different things within there and ask yourself, where are you putting your focus? And likewise, if you're too far above those numbers, it could be a sign that you're sitting on a house of cards that's waiting to break. So the best way for you to figure out whether or not you're doing your priorities, success is, is an interesting barometer, okay? You know, as a business owner, when you don't have time to focus on priorities, you probably are going to realize that it costs you more in the long run by not stopping to evaluate your priorities than to keep on putting out those fires one by one. And so the message I typically tell entrepreneurs is, who say to me, I don't have time for that. I typically say to them, you don't have time not to stop and plan and establish your priorities because when you're just doing things either in a sequential order or as they come up, they may or may not be the most important thing for you to focus on and you may miss something that really matters or you may not allocate enough time to address something that really matters and you better be careful because that could be costly. But at the end of the day, if you are assessing priorities and determining where to lay your resources or how much of resources to give to a particular task, and you want to know what's the cost me not to do it and what's the benefit of doing it and what might it cost me to do it. So there's always a financial aspect in a business because the purpose of a business is to maximize re returns for shareholders. And so it's hard to get away from a finance contribution to major decisions. We definitely use a framework for establishing a budgeting process. So we have a framework of assisting companies with a budgeting process that forces them to think about the main things that drive their business. So it starts with understanding the drivers for the business. Is it the number of customers you have? Is it the amount of money you get out of each customer? Is it the diversity of your products? How do you compare in terms of what the competitors are doing? Is it the markets that you choose to sell in? And so in developing a framework for planning and budgeting, you create an environment whereby the organization is examining each of the things that drive their business success. And so we have that, and that's what we use to help our customers get there. Many times they've never done budgeting. So you've got to speak outside of financial language in order to successfully assist a small business in getting through a budgeting process. The best way that I use to measure how a company is doing in many respects is you look at the trend. So you look at their historical performance versus their current performance. And if you're able to isolate what were you doing last year and what were you doing this year, you can really get an understanding of the impact of doing or not doing certain things. And so it's not enough just to look at the financial results. You have to understand what's continued over that period and what's discontinued over that period. And when you approach that in the right way, you can actually isolate the impact of the choices that they made along the way. Good leaders know what they know and they are not insecure or they're not afraid to say, I'm really good at this. That thing that we're gonna do, I don't know enough about it. Well, when you're not sure if you know enough about it, it doesn't hurt to ask somebody who ought to know more about it. And then you can make that decision. So I think if I'm a business owner, 
I'm going to speak to somebody who, who may know more about something than I am, and that's going to determine whether or not I go forward with an outsider. The sign of a good leader, is, especially in a leader where it's not just a, a company of one, is that they are always aware of how what they're doing and how the business environment is affecting the people who work in their space. And if you are that type of a leader, you can look around and realize, uh-oh, I've got a prioritization issue. I've got to step back, set some priorities for me and for my team members, and then let everybody start rowing in the same direction.